Right, okay, so let's get started on our masterclass focusing on ponytails and creating buns and chignon for our clients with the Afro kinky hair textures and multi-textured hair as well. So before I did the masterclass, I had to do quite a bit of prep just to make sure that I can actually do the styling and actually finish the complete style. So most of the prep has been done, but I'm just going to talk through uh, what I did or what was done to the hair so you guys know um, how I arrived to how the hair is going to look when you actually see it in a moment. Um, so I always like to start by covering, just looking at some of the products that we will need and methods of how you would use those products and when you would use them specifically. So um, when it comes to styling your Afro and multi-textured hair, if you're a hairstylist, maybe you're based in the salon or you do freelance or you work in fashion, you do session work, or maybe you work in the film and TV industry, you're going to come to a point where you have to, there are ways to create really nice creative styles that can actually be used for film and TV, can be worn for someone for a special occasion, but it has to be done very quickly. Because with our Afro hair textures, most of the other styles that we tend to do, they do take a little bit of time. There isn't a lot of styles that allow you that freedom to really do something super quick and still be able to achieve like a really, really amazing style and finish to the hair. So what I've tried to do is to um, show you guys different ways that you can do a quick style or how you can repurpose some of the styles that might be done to the hair and then change it into something else. Uh, instead of just keeping it the way that it was as well. So the three looks that I'll be showing you guys, um, there's going to be one focusing on our um, ponytail technique. So the hair is already smoothed out. It is going to be a braid. It's a braid ponytail, uh, but this one, it's not like avant-garde or anything, but it's quite creative. So I had to do a little bit of prep on there, but I'll talk you through how I attached the hair itself, but there's more hair extension going onto the ponytail to finish it. So that's one of the looks I'll be doing. And I also am doing a style on hair that was um, previously done doing a demonstration on how to do adding tracks into um, Afro hair textures. I'll kind of explain that as I style that hair so you know what I mean by that. Uh, so that hair is prepped and it was set and it's curly. And I'll be trying to do a kind of like a small uh, chignon type of style towards the back area slightly coming to the side because the nature of the, the length of the hair is not super long, okay? So it's not going to be like a super long style. And then the last one that I'll show is on a training head that we're using to showcase some of the cane row techniques, which I did do uh, this Friday. Um, so that is going to be used and I'll show you how essentially you can have someone who's just had like a cane row style that was done just plain and simple, just going straight back. And then how you can then add some hair extension to just change the way that style looks as well. So one of the questions that's been coming up as I've been doing a lot of training, uh, especially for those of you who are in uh, industries where you have to really work super quick because you don't have much time. We did ask questions regarding to, you know, how can I create a quick style in like 10 minutes, something that is still nice and wearable uh, without having to spend so much time. Because for some of you, you might not necessarily get, you know, like an hour to two hours to style someone hair. You probably would have maybe like 20 minutes to do like hair and makeup if you're in that field of work where you're doing hair and makeup as well. So hopefully what I'll share with you will kind of give you some inspiration and ideas of how you can achieve some of these styles as well. So the first look I'll be doing is the one that I uh, set and this is a um, so this style here is a combination of a silk press technique and the method of adding hair extensions using the sewing in technique method so both of those styles in terms of doing them it takes much much time so it wouldn't even be two hours would not even be enough to show you how to do that on here so this was pre-done so the silk press method is the method that we use on our kinky hair textures and curly hair textures that are natural and we want to achieve like a straight silky finish to the hair so the method of achieving that requires you to do a really great uh, blow dry on the hair get it as straight as you can during the blow drying process and then you're going to go over with your um, straighteners so your straighteners have to be very hot for this to be achieved, especially if you're doing this on your kinky hair textures, you're going to have to use your straighteners on maximum heat. I hope you would have straighteners that go up to at least um, 
240 degrees maximum. I know that's about the hottest that we have with the straighteners that I've seen here in the UK. Um, unless if I'm wrong, someone please do correct me and let me know. Uh, but otherwise, most of the time, they're either going to be anything between 200 to 240. Now to achieve that straight silky finish on the hair texture that is kinky coiled, um, you're going to use at least 240. It has to be maximum hot heat for that to work. So for example, if you are given, um, say maybe you're like a bridal stylist or you're doing like a photo shoot where you, you have to achieve like a nice straight silky finish and you want to have these type of curls in the hair. The person's hair is naturally kinky, Afro hair texture. So you will have to do the silk press technique, get that hair nice and straight so that it matches the blend of the extension that is going to be put in the hair. This is where we do the adding in technique, the sewing in what we call adding tracks to the hair. So I'll just open this up and just to show you guys so you know what I mean. So these hair extensions here, we had to do like a small thin cane row on the inside and then we sewed the weft onto that cane row. So I have about um, these uh one two three there's three double lines when i say double it just means we took the weft and then i folded it to create more like a double effect so it's a little bit more thicker and it's much more hair so that was then sewn onto the track that i just showed you here and we have three of those so when you're doing that you have to establish the finish look that you're going for so you can place that in the right places it will be similar to like if you're going to put uh clip-ins in someone's hair it's pretty much the same method but instead of having clip-ins that someone will just take out this is something where we want it to stay for a long time so the client is not having to retake out and restyle the hair every single time so it's all in there and then she just has to maintain it and because the hair is not naturally straight and it's been straightened, we have to avoid any form of water touching the hair. So the hair has to be kept away from water as best as you can. And, um, you know, just keep it covered when they, you know, when they're taking a shower or something, they have to keep the hair covered. So any form of water goes on the hair, it will naturally start to go back to its natural state. So we do not want that to happen. So the process is done using serums. Um, to blow dry and to straighten as well. So the the system that I use is the Mizani Thermo Smooth. In case someone is interested to know what product would you use to create the silk press technique, I use the Mizani Thermo Smooth system. It comes with a shampoo conditioner. And then step three is the serum that's used for blow drying and straightening. And then step four is the spray that works as an anti-humidity spritz and it also adds shine to the hair as well, okay? So it's a bit of a process to do that. So it's going to take you more than uh, an hour and a half could be maybe two two hours two and a half because you have to straighten and then add the extension and then do the styling okay so this is one of the techniques that i've done quite a lot um especially if it's like a bridal look and someone is looking to have more like a long length silky finish where naturally the hair is kinky they wouldn't be able to achieve that this is the method of how we'd get to finish that style similar to some of the images that you see when people have uh, like the bridal styling okay so what I just have here is the serum I'm just taking that through the hair just like that the extension so I am mindful that we cannot afford to put too much product on the hair extension because it will make them a little bit oily but I just want a little bit of shine in the hair there so the extension itself is a 14 inch in length and I put that in and then it was cut to shape up around the front here in terms of matching the length of the hair that was around the front and we just had a side parting and i just curled this with my um i used my straighteners to put the curls in so these are the straighteners i was using but once the straighteners uh when, when i curled with the straighteners sorry let me just grab so i straightened the hair and then i set it with the flex rods after it was straightened so it was still hot and then it was set so that just holds it if i did this with just straighteners i wouldn't have this uh, type of curl, it would eventually drop quite quickly. So I just used that method because I didn't want this to drop too quickly, okay? So what I'm going to try and do is to create a shinion. I never know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I think I am, because um, no one has said anything to me so far. So, <laughs> so what I've done is I've got this donut that I have here, but what I just done is I just cut it so that I would use it as my padding to just sit across the back of the head here. Um, normally I would have either made one uh, to the shape that I want, but I didn't have time. I just literally just decided, okay, may maybe I want to put something just to create a bit of volume to the style. So I literally just took and then just cut it in half. So if you have some of these, 
this could be essentially another way that you could use them if you're looking to have more like a padding that is more like oblong and it sits more across the head instead of like a round shape like this donut here but be careful some of them when they cut they start to unravel so just be careful hopefully you've got a good um one that you can use there all right so i'm just going to bring this nice and low so you can actually start to see what i am doing here i've not put any hairspray on this as yet um i probably will once i start once i finish the styling process but i have not put any hairspray and also because i've got the cane rows in there that um part of the base for sewing onto the weft this is actually going to help me when i put the padding in so i've got somewhere to actually hold this onto so if you if you may be working with someone with very long hair and you don't have to put the extra hair into the hair then you can essentially create maybe like two lines of cane rows where you want to attach the, the padding because that actually helps to secure that because it's going to be very difficult just to pin it in without somewhere to actually hold it in place so you want to make sure that you actually do your cane rows so your cane rows doesn't have to be super thick but you just want to make sure that it's um enough for you to actually place the padding all the way to the areas that you actually want it to sit on the head okay so i don't have to worry about doing any back combing to try and hold the padding to create a base for the padding to hold it in place okay so i'm just going to uh use i'm using my i'm going to use my my black hair grips these ones here to uh, pin that in place and then i've also got the long pins the black ones so i tend to use a combination of the long black ones and then i have these slightly thin ones i've got the two different types here okay so my pins are all like all interlocked into each other so it's a bit tricky picking them up so i've got this like this is a black one the smaller one um it's a fine pin and then i've got that one that is slightly longer than the black one here um so i've got a combination of different about four different pins that i'm using for this styling so this is just going to be placed just around here just like that so i'll probably go in with my black wide one just to help me to secure that in a little bit so that that's holding okay okay and um i forgot to mention if you guys have any questions there is a question and answer box um you should see the icon somewhere on the screen <laughs> but it's there so feel free to pop in any questions um you can also put put them in the chat anyway that's not a problem so you can pop them in there and i will um stop uh i tend to do the complete look of each style before i stop and answer any questions in case anyone's got any questions so you just have to be patient with me and bear with me as i do this so i can show you because i once i start I always feel time starts to go super quick and i've not answered everyone's question so if anyone's got a question and i don't manage to answer your question um on here i do apologize you can always reach out to me on my instagram i'm more than happy to answer anyone's questions that they might have that i might have missed if you ask me any questions um if you've got questions regarding products or anything else just let me know and i'll answer those as well so this is just kind of pinned in straight across here okay so i do want to have a little bit of volume to to my hair as i start to style the hair as well okay um I did set the hair with the curls all the way around the top, but I'm probably going to comb this and then smooth it out because I don't want it to, it's not looking um, as nice as I want it to with the wave sitting at the top. So I'm not really too bothered about maintaining curl around the top. It's mostly here that I wanted to have the curl um, on the hair. So I will start by, um, I'm going to start and pin this in. So I'm just going to do this slightly loosely and it's not going to be, uh super tight on there so i'm almost trying to create more like a messy type of finish with the curl so it's not going to be uh super uh smooth in and i'm going to be using my serum here because some of the hair around the ends of it is looking like it's wanting to go a little bit frizzy so this is where i would use a combination of my serum here just to smooth it through the hair there uh, but i'm again i'm being mindful not to put too much because I do not want to um, make this hair look too oily at this point. 
and I'm just loosely putting the pins in and then eventually I will go back and then if there's any areas that I feel I need to uh, pin the hair a little bit more then I will do that okay so this technique or spiral when it's finished it probably might look slightly similar to the one that I did in the first um, ponytails and buns masterclass but that one I had to I was using synthetic hair to do that um, style and I managed to create almost the similar effect that you get when you curl the hair by just wrapping the hair around my finger to create more like a flower shape when I was actually doing the style because with your synthetic hair you, you don't really have much option in terms of getting that hair straight or curling it with your curlers it's not going to work so you have to find ways to actually be able to do that so essentially this is another way of then doing it but then you're using um, human hair extension instead of the synthetic hair extensions that I used as well so it just depends on the person's budget and also some people they don't want to have um, they don't necessarily want to have uh, human hair extensions on their head they'll rather just use the synthetic because it's only for a short time but they're keeping the style anyway so they're not too concerned about how long it's going to stay on the head okay uh, but yeah so you just ask your client it depends the ones who don't like to use human hair they will tell you that I don't want to have human hair on my head I'd rather have synthetic hair okay um, and also another thing is the, with our afro hair textures the hair texture itself um, is not naturally uh, silky and straight so it's kinky and the hair doesn't grow to a lot of length like a very long length so you, you, you're always having to either rely on using um, hair extension to achieve the style and the results that you might want in the hair as well so that's one thing you will learn as you start to work with your afro hair that you you will have to always at some point revert to using um, the hair extensions just to achieve the style the client might want to have in their hair because the hair doesn't grow as long and as fast so most people they don't want to cut their hair so we just use the hair extension so I've learned to master different ways that I can utilize hair extensions and still be able to achieve the results that I want in the styles that I might be looking to create for my clients as well. Okay. Right, okay, so I'm starting to just slowly cover up the padding there. So normally I would either use padding that is dark. So this one is a light color because that was the first one that I saw in my collection and I just I just reached for it um, but normally I would use something dark especially if the hair that I'm working on is quite dark and I don't want the hair showing through in any of the parts of the styling of the hair as well so so I just have a few different options so I have well, I've got about 20 uh, different size donuts in my collection at the moment so most of them they're black I've not come across like a brown one. Most of them, they're black and then this kind of blonde color that you see there that I just used for this one today. Okay. So let me know if you need me to move the training head, if you can't really see. Sometimes I start doing this and then I forget that, okay, maybe not everyone can see what I'm doing right now. So I need to be mindful of that. Um, the brand of extension that I just used is called um, called Premium Now. This is that's the hair that I use. So that one is a slightly cheaper brand of hair extension because um, obviously I'm doing this on a training head. I don't have to spend a whole lot of money on very expensive hair extensions that I'm going to be styling and cutting for training, but. Um, there are many other options in terms of what hair extensions you could use. It just depends on your budget um, or the person's budget as well that you're you're styling their hair for. So there's different brands. So the 
the texture of hair extensions that you want to get when you're looking to style your afro hair, you want to get the hair that's called yaki. So Y-A-K-I. So the hair extension has to be the yaki hair because that's the one that has got similar texture to like your afro hair texture when it's actually been straightened or relaxed. So that's why we tend to use that type of brand. You don't want to get the one that says um, European straight, depending on the brand or where you're getting the hair from. You don't want to use that one because that one matches more closer to um, Caucasian hair texture and it's a little bit too silky. So it might not blend very well with um, the person's actual hair that you might be styling. So you want to make sure that you get the right brand of hair extension if you are going to do this for someone and you are going to use hair extensions. But you have many different options. Obviously, you've got the brands like the Brazilian hair extensions that you're able to color to match um, whatever the person's colors hair might be, or maybe they want to uh, for you to create a whole different color in the hair. So if you know that you're going to be coloring the hair extension, then you want to probably either, if you're providing the hair for them, then you want to get good quality hair that you're able to color. Because some of the hair extensions, when we buy and we try to color the hair, it doesn't actually um, remain in a good condition some of the time so you just want to be to be careful what uh, hair you get okay right so i'm just pinning in the side just slightly just holding it in place okay so what i did is i just sprayed some of my holding spray onto the hair so this is the one that i'm using i'm using the goldwell um super firm mega hold <laughs> uh hair liquor liquor i don't know liquor i don't know how to pronounce that i'm not french so uh so forgive me but yeah this is <laughs> this is the one that i'm using and it's like number five so it's like a super hold on the hair although it doesn't feel that hard to be honest even though it's like class this number five it's got like a super hold but it's not that hard on the hair okay so that's why i just sprayed just to smooth that down um so it's not necessarily too high up in terms of how it's sticking up where the hair was previously curled but just enough to make it slick down a little bit so i don't tend to get a chance to do a lot of um this type of styling with specifically with human hair most of the time i'm doing a lot of styling with a uh, synthetic hair extension um but it's always a little bit of a challenge for me when I have to style curls like this, because I'm always worried that the curls are either not going to hold or I didn't curl them in the right direction. But it seems like this is okay. I'm sure there's someone out there who will be thinking, Michelle, you could have probably done your curls like that or different direction, but it's a learning process. <laughs> But at least you see the finish when it's done. It should look like something that someone would actually want to wear. Sometimes, most of the time, we only use our holding sprays on Afro hair when it's actually been uh, straightened, more the silk press method. But in terms of any other styles that we tend to do, we don't use a lot of um, holding sprays because the hair doesn't really need it unless it's specifically a style that is similar to what I'm doing here. Or maybe it's hair that's been chemically processed like your relaxed hair that is uh, made to be permanently straight through the use of, of using um, chemicals in the hair, then that is going to be slightly different. So you're able to use maybe a little bit more of your hairsprays for that type of hair texture. But with some of our Afro hair, we don't tend to use a lot of um, holding sprays. But because I find that also makes the hair a little bit dry because Afro hair texture is naturally dry anyway. So we try and avoid putting more stuff that would actually cause it to be a little bit more dry in terms of how it looks when it's actually been styled. 
So that's why sometimes you don't put a lot of um, the holding sprays in the hair. But if you wanted to use it, then by all means, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but just be careful not to put too much on the hair or you want to make sure the hair that you're styling had been moisturized enough before we started the process of styling. So this will be creams and products that apply to the hair during your, your blow drying technique or during the blow drying process, should I say, before you're doing any form of styling on, to, on the hair. Okay. I'm just turning this so you can see how it's looking so far in the back. Um, normally I always finish my styles with um, some kind of accessory on the hair. Um, but I couldn't find the one that I wanted to use today. Well, I didn't give myself enough time to really look for it, to be honest. But um, probably when I post pictures of the finished looks, it will have some kind of accessory in the hair. I always find it just adds to the style, especially if you're doing these type of styles on someone's head. It just adds a little bit more style to it. So I am intentionally leaving some of the curls sticking out. I'm not looking to place them all nice and smooth here, but just enough to still make it look nicely done but still have that kind of uh, messy curl finish. So this would be more like a bridal style, to be honest. Uh, for someone to wear this, it will probably be more like a bridal style. Um, if it's like an everyday look, then you might maybe do it maybe a little bit smaller than what it is. Uh, but most of the time, this would be more like a bridal style or like an evening wear type of look, special occasion. So normally when I use my pins, I would fold it just like that and then place it in so it holds it. Um, the ones that I, I've just been putting, I haven't done that because um, I know it's still holding and I'm likely going to be taking this out uh, <laughs> later today. So I am just lightly putting it in there. But if this was for someone to, for them to wear it for the day, and I know that it definitely has to hold, then I would be making sure that when I put my pins in there, they're slightly folded in so that it keeps um, the pins in place. Because if you don't do that, eventually they'll start to lift throughout the day. Um, they'll just start to gradually lift off. So you don't want that to be happening to anyone's hair that you've just styled. All right, so that's kind of like how it's looking from the side there. And I'll just smooth the side here down a little bit. I do want it to sit a little bit more flat there. So eventually with some of the pins that I put in there, I would have to go in and smooth them out so that they're not showing. Or sometimes if there's a particular pin that I need to hold the hair down, I would have made sure that I'm probably planning to put an accessory over that so it doesn't actually show. Okay, so that's kind of like my my way of kind of styling the hair. I would use some of my accessories to disguise some of the areas that I don't necessarily want to be seen, especially when it comes to some of the pins that I use. Right, okay, so this is, I mean, this is quickly done, but you can essentially see uh, the style in there. So I will be put in some accessories, like I mentioned, I'll be adding some more accessories to this, just to add to the finish of the style. But essentially it's just about, if you are going to look to create something similar to this, so someone gives you a picture of something similar to this, and they do have naturally kinky coiled hair, and you're thinking, okay, how would we be able to achieve that style and finish on that hair? Because the hair is not naturally straight, so obviously you have to find ways to be able to do the style for the client. So just using the method of the silk press and then adding in the tracks that you want. You can also, at this point, use different colors because the person might not necessarily want to color their hair. So we could use, like I just did here, I've got a combination of the, the golden blonde with a slightly dark blonde mixed in with the hair extension. So it's giving like an ombre, um, kind of like a balayage effect in terms of the colors, how they're mixing as well. 
So that's just another way of introducing color or adding color to someone's hair if they don't necessarily want to actually color their own hair, okay? So I hope you like uh, look number one. I know <laughs> time is going, so I hope I still have enough time to show you all the other looks without having to rush through them. But yeah, so I would, uh, so obviously this will have accessories and I'll take pictures and you'll be able to see a little bit more closer. But this is essentially another method of how we'll be able to achieve this type of look for anyone with um, Afro hair texture if we're going to be using um, human hair and not synthetic hair, okay? So you saw the products that I used. I just used a little bit of the hairspray just around the top, but it's not holding super hard actually. As much as they say it's like a firm hard hold on the spray, it's not that hard on the hair at all. So that could be a good spray to get if you're looking for a good holding spray. That's not going to be dry super hard. I do like how this came through. I was worried about the curls um, not sitting the way that I might have wanted them to but they held okay okay so that was look number one that we just completed um if anyone's got any questions i can answer any but i don't see any so i'm just going to move on to our look number two so this was a training head as you can see it's got cane rows on there so i have been doing training on cane row techniques uh, both for the Afro hairstyling course that I'm running online and also I just did this on the free masterclass that I'm running. I think there's at least two more coming on how to do cane row and braiding for beginners. So this was just showing the different methods of how you can use different sectioning patterns and directions to achieve different looks to your cane rows. Hence why you can see a variety of um, the styles that you can see on there and then one side obviously was pre-done and then the other one was used for the demo. So I just wanted to use this uh, here to show you that if you did, maybe you did a cane roll for someone and they decide that, okay, maybe they've got an event they're going to, but essentially they want to have the cane roll that they can keep in for two weeks. And maybe the event is uh, two days from the time that you do it. They just want something that can easily wear in a styled, nice finished way. And then they can just remove it and then still keep the cane rows. Uh, this would be another way that you could possibly do that. So again, um, when you do do cane rows, it's much more nicer when it's actually styled and the sectioning patterns that you create will also add to the finish and the style that you do instead of just doing the plain ones, just going straight back. So if, you, if you're not even very good at doing like, you know, extreme patterns or anything, you don't have to do that. It's just about, you know, doing the angling section. Like you can see where it starts off small and then goes a little bit wider. You could essentially have like the ones that look similar to this, maybe five of them on the head. And then you just add a little bit of extension around the back that already makes the style look completely different to how it was when you actually started doing the style as well. So this is what I'm just going to show you. So this will be our, our look number two. Uh, just to show you how, sorry, I tend to keep, <laughs> I always put uh, uh, towel combs, stick them in my head as if it's like a pin cushion or anything and pins. So I'm just taking those out. Okay. So what I have here is I'm going to be using uh, this hair donut here around the back. So this is a bun that is just going to sit around the back area here. Um, if you didn't necessarily, maybe if the person had like a old curly wig or something, and they weren't sure how to probably uh, repurpose that we can use it again. They could actually use it as more like a ponytail where the hair is either smoothed up and then they attach it at the back or you can do cane rows and then attach that hair extension as well. So there's many ways of kind of playing around with the hair. So something like this, um, again, it will take time in terms of putting the cane rows in. But if someone has already got the cane rows in and all you're having to do is maybe restyle the hair, maybe your uh, stylist who's working like on a commercial or something and they've got someone with cane rows and they essentially want you to create maybe two looks out of that style. So they could start off shooting with the cane rows and then after you go in, you add the bun and then that's another style that looks slightly different and still similar to what the first one might have been, but it's a little bit different. So something like that would take maybe... Um, I mean, it would take like 10 minutes, depending on how super fast you are. Uh, it could take like 20 minutes. Uh, but this would be something that I would do if someone came to me and they were doing something just quick and we're not looking to spend too much time on how we would do that hair. So these were just cane rodent and we left these out here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to plait these together so I can pin them out of the way. Okay. Um, the donut is literally just going to be pinned around the back here. So I don't have to worry about this 
uh, extra bit of hair. Essentially, I could have taken this donut and then just placed it here and then have that hair coming through there. But I don't feel like doing that, per se, because of the hair that I'm going to add to this. I'm literally just going to take this and then just using my black hair grip here, I've just pinned that up here. So what I'll do with this is I'm just going to take it and it's literally just going to be placed around the back here. Um, so you can choose how high you want it to go, depending on the extension that you're going to be putting on top of this here. So essentially, I want it to still see a lot more of the hair extension, but I still want it to uh, show the bun sitting at the back, especially if you're uh, taking an image from the, the picture from the front or if they're just standing facing someone, they'll be able to see that bun sitting there instead of having it super low. But you can choose to decide, you can decide how high or low you want that to be okay so i'm just placing it round about here so that you can still see the shape of it kind of visible from the front there so again because we've got the cameras on there so they're a perfect base for me to pin this um donut into the hair so i'm just using my my black hair grips here so i'll probably just need maybe four of them so i'm just placing one here and the other on the both sides and then one just around the back here just um to hold it in place Okay, so around the back here, I do have that bit of hair here. So this will be covered up with the extension when I put it on there. So what I did with the extension is I pre-twisted the hair. So again, using our hair extension here, we're using the synthetic one now. So this is the expression hair that you can see here. So this is pre-twisted. So what I will do is I'm going to what you want to do is when you're twisting the hair so actually let me just undo this and i'll show you guys how i actually did this okay so this is just the hair you just decide the amount that you want to do for your twist and then all you're just doing is like a rope twist technique okay so if you've already taken one of my classes i would have taught you how to do the twisting where you pre-twist and then you twist the hair over it um the section from the left which will go Sorry, the section on the right will go over the one on the left. I'm confusing myself. It's always tricky when I'm trying to explain how to do this. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to take one of my pins here and then just use the this base here to just hold that extension in place while I do the twisting. So all you're just going to do is you want to pre-twist. Normally when you're doing rope twist, you pre-twist and then you wrap it over. But because with this hair extension here, essentially I want the twist to be quite loose, not super tight. If I wanted it super tight, I'll do a lot more tighter pre-twisting, but I'm just doing that lightly. And then I am intentionally doing this a little bit loose than what I would normally do. So all you're just doing is a slight pre-twist of each strand, and then it's going to be wrapped over the hair just like that, okay? So essentially you could use this method to just create extra hair that you want to put into like a bun and you'd style the hair that way. So that's just another quick way of using your hair extensions, okay? So these are the expression hair, the synthetic hair extension. So with this here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly loosen this here. So again, it's not going to be a super smooth bun when it's actually put into the hair because that's the look that I'm going for. But I'm just going to place this here and I'll be using a combination of my uh, the long pins, the gold ones and the black ones as well, okay? So I'm just going to pin this just directly through the cane row and onto my um, padding just there, okay? So again, I am just slightly pulling the sections apart. So not completely, but just gently pulling them apart. So this will naturally expand the size of the twist and also expand the size of the hair and essentially allowing me more um, hair that I can use to to cover up the hair, sorry, the padding or the donuts that we're using. Okay, so I do have um, four of these pieces here. So this one is still a little bit more tight, but I did it that way because I know that I, if I do it too loose and then leave it, eventually it will become super loose and it will come out too quickly than I want it to. Okay, so I'll just go over it and I'll just start to loosen it a little bit, but not too much, because I don't want it to unravel, okay? So again, you can decide what colors you want to blend with this. So I had um, 
some extra hair that I had prepared. So when you use this hair extension, um, I have done video on YouTube on how to work with synthetic hair, specifically this type of hair in terms of how you actually need to prepare the hair so that you can use it properly without the hair becoming tangled or losing too much of the hair because the hair doesn't naturally come with like a feathered finish as you can see here. We actually have to brush the hair out uh, doing the feathering method where you're slightly pulling out the ends and then brushing them together. So if you do decide to try this and you wanted to use this type of hair, I would recommend that you watch um, that training video that I did on my Instagram just to know how to prepare the hair extension. And then you can go ahead and then use the hair extension. I also demonstrated how I mix the colors of the hair extensions because when you buy them, you're not always going to get like a good color mix. And most of them, they're just going to be one type of color. So I literally just buy a whole lot of hair extensions uh, with different colors, the bright ones, the darker ones. And then what I do is I would then combine them and blend them and mix my own color tones that I want in uh, in the style that I'm doing. Okay, so I did take this out just a little bit, um, just to loosen it a little bit more because I did do it a little bit firm. Okay, so that's kind of like how it's looking from the front there, but I still have uh, a little bit more to add to this. So this is the other piece here. So this is cut in three. So when you buy the hair itself, it does come in a very long, very, very long single braid. So you will have to cut it to the length that you actually want it to be when you start working with it, okay? So it, it won't come cut already for you. Although they actually sell um, hair that's pre-prepared uh, beforehand, it's still the same brand, it's called Expression Hair. And if you go in packs, uh, when, we're a, when they eventually open up the shop and you go there, or you're going to order it, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but I know it's pre-prepared. So it will say pre something on there, but essentially the hair is already pulled and feathered. So you don't actually have to, to do that method. But the only thing I don't like about the one that you buy that's done already is because it's uh, too thin. It's a little bit less hair than when you actually buy the actual packet yourself and then you do it yourself. So I tend not to use that unless I've got a client and they're going to braid their hair and it's going to be super long. It's going to take a long process to prepare the hair. Then we'll just get the hair that's already been pre-done because it does save time, obviously. But I, when I have time, I prefer, to, I prefer to prepare my own hair myself. Okay. So I'm just, again, loosening that out a little bit. Um, and then I'm just going to twist it in a very loose finish just here. But I do make it a little bit more tighter as I get further down the hair just there, okay? So I've got three in there. I think I might be okay with just the three uh, chunky twists that I've done instead of the four that I was initially going to do. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take these sections here and essentially I'm just going to uh, braid them over each other just like that. And then as I do that, I'm going to go in and start to loosen out some of the hair extensions, um, some of the parts where it's twisted just to make it a little bit more uh, looser. And I'll start working on covering my, um, my donut just there. So this is lightly just braided in as one big braid, even though it's like a twist. And I'll just go in and start to place the pieces where I want them to be and essentially start to create the finish and the style on this hair here. And I'll be using my my gold and the black pins for this. So literally you just do the twist and then you pin it lightly and then you just go over and start to pull on the areas that you want to stick out more or loosen a little bit more as you go. And again, like I said, this is going to be a bit of a, not a super clean finish, but it's still going to be styled in a nice way. So it's not looking super messy, but just be careful with the synthetic hair extension. It can easily 
unravel on you. If you do it too rush and you don't take your time, it can easily just unravel. So you want to be careful you don't do that and you don't lose the look of the twist that you created in the first place, okay? So I'm just going to go in and just check and see where I want to place the hair. And then I'll provisionally just put my pins in and then I'll go back in and adjust them a little bit more if I need to, to do that, okay? So the more I push the hair and separate it a little bit more from the firmer twist that I did, the fuller it does become when you're looking at the style as well. And the higher it's going to be in terms of on the bun itself as well. So again, if you don't necessarily want it to look super big like mine is going to do, <laughs> as most of my styles tend to do anyway when I style them, then you just want to maintain that firm twist finish on the twist itself and then you just style it that way okay so you can start to see that sort of taking shape there again you can see it from the front and we'll be able to see it nicely from the side as well and then eventually from the back once I finish placing the pins where I want them to be on this donut here okay so it's a little bit wider around the back which is perfect because it's helping to cover up um, the very bottom part of where that cane roll finishes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm running, I always run out of pins. And I always think I put enough, but I always run out of the pins that I want here. Okay. So I'm just going around here and just placing the pins in where I've, I'm just using my hand to just hold it in place a little bit, but I'm just going around and placing the pins just to hold that a little bit more. And then I would again, come back through and then check to see if there's any areas where I need to blend it in a little bit more. But essentially this is, well, I didn't check the time what it was when I started, but I'm hoping that someone did, because I think it didn't take too long, right? Like maybe, Less than 20 minutes I've been doing this. Maybe more. But either way, you, you, you can see that this can be something that you can do very quickly. And you don't have to worry so much about the time process because the hair, hopefully, if you allow yourself enough time to prepare the hair beforehand, or if the person is coming to you and the hair has been pre cane road then again, you don't have to worry so much about the time frame of how long this would take. Okay. So if I didn't necessarily want it to have the hair sticking out slightly, as you can see, some of the hair is kind of got like a frizzy texture to it as it sticks out, but I intentionally want that kind of finish on there anyway. So if I didn't want that, I would place like a light a net on this. So I have this type of net here. So this will be something like this. I'll place over this. And then what I'll do is I'll spray with um, holding spray. And then I'll take my dryer on medium heat and medium airflow. And then I'll just blast it over that, not holding it too close, but just close enough so that you can literally start to see the areas of the hair that was sticking out slowly laying down because the heat naturally causes this synthetic hair extension to not only become a uh, slick in and it sits, but it becomes uh, super shiny. But if you do this too much, it will start to melt because it is synthetic hair and it's not necessarily designed to have very high heat on it. So that's just another way that you could finish that look if you're going to do this and you're going to finish the hair as well, okay? Um, so I'm almost done with this again. When I take pictures of this, eventually this will probably have some accessories to it to finish it. Um, I'm not sure what accessories I'll use per se, but it will have something in there. But you can see that we've got um, a nice style that looks 
different to what it was before where it just looked um, just slightly plain, obviously, with just the cane rows just on the hair. But once we start to add the extension, we completely started to change the look. So this is, again, I obviously, anyone who's seen my work <laughs> by now knows that Michelle likes flowers in most hairstyles that she does when it comes to accessorizing. Um, and I do have a lot of flowers in my collection. So again, this is where I would put in some accessories to this style. And then that will just finish the look nicely. So you can decide whatever you want to put in this. If you're like me and you have flowers that you can use, then we're going to use those. Um, if you have more like uh, maybe some shiny accessories, like I also have some of those, um, they're like, what do you call them? Like a brooch, you know what people put on their clothes? like the diamante stuff, like a brooch, you pin it in. But I have those that I actually use in hair instead because I don't personally wear that on my clothes. Um, but yeah, so again, I'm always hunting down for different stuff that I could use as my accessories. And I just collect stuff and then eventually I use it. Um, and I tend to go to like haberdasheries. That's where I go to pick up things like these. So I would go to like a haberdashery and they'll have different flowers because some of them they use for like bridal stuff, like decorating the tables and you know, the, the outfits or whatever they're using it for. But that's where I tend to get most of this stuff. Uh, but I think these ones, I actually went to Ikea. I went to Ikea in their flower section because they sell like the fake flowers. So obviously I went there and I bought a whole lot of them. <laughs> Not to decorate my house or anything, but <laughs> to decorate hair. So that's what I use that for. So there's always interesting places where you can go and buy a whole lot of different stuff that you can use for accessorizing, okay? But essentially, this is the look. And this was like a combination of starting off with like a very tight twist. And then you just gradually go over it and slightly to loosen it. And then you're stretching and placing the twist in areas that you want it to sit. Um, but yeah, so this was just like a quick way of how we can uh, repurpose um, a style that was done initially as just the basic camera and then now we transition it into more like an updo style. Uh, so yeah, so I hope you give this a try and I'll be looking forward to seeing any images if anyone does give this a try. Again, if you have just extra hair extensions just lying around, um like some of us do <laughs> then you can repurpose those and then try and play around with them and then use them as well but essentially you can order this hair you can get it from packs or online amazon i think you can get it from as well and it's just called expression hair and that's a lot of most of the time when we style afro hair we tend to use a lot of extensions so these are just some of them they'll be using and clients are not looking to spend a whole lot of money on styles that they're just wearing for a short while so if someone had this done this could be either be worn for the day or they could keep it in for at least another five days if they maintain it well and they cover it when they're sleeping. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, a large bun that's sort of looking like, <laughs> it's looking like a chignon, isn't it? But it's a bun, it, that's what it is, okay? <laughs> it just happened to end up being this large, but I hope you like this look. This is look number two. And yes, give it a try when you get a chance to. Okay, because I'd love to see what you guys uh, come up with as well. Um, the training on how to do cane rows is also on the YouTube channel. If anyone wants to learn specifically how to do this, because literally I just did this on Friday. So the training is on there if you want to learn how to do cane rows. And then once you do the cane rows, then proceed and do the updo style. Okay, so this lady here required the prep that you can see. So you might be thinking, uh, Michelle, that the hair is done. So what are you going to show us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to show you something, all right? So um, it, it took a while to get the hair nice and smooth and attaching the, the hair itself, um, it, it didn't take too long, but I just had to prepare it because there's more hair that's going on to this as well. So this is not the finished look, okay? So um, to achieve this smoothness, so this, if you're going to do this type of smoothing, and you wanted to achieve this look on someone with like kinky coiled hair texture, the hair is afro, you don't have to blow dry and straighten like the silk press in terms of like the first look that I did where the hair was silky and straight. With this one, you just want to do, definitely want to blow dry the hair 
and then smooth it with a padded brush. So when we blow dry our Afro hair, we always go in with the fork attachment. Um, so it looks like that. So this is what you're going to use for your kinky hair textures. Or if you have someone with very curly hair, like our type 3B and some of our 3C hair textures, it's curly and then some of it's kinky curly. So again, it still requires a good prep before we can do anything else with the hair. So you want to make sure that you blow dry it with a fork attachment. And then once you finish doing that, you go over it with a padded brush to really smooth the hair, okay? And now, when it comes to products to get that really nice slick finish, you're going to be using a glaze or some might know you might, you might know it as an edge control. So you have edge control products that I use to, you know, style the edges when people do their little baby hairs and they style them. I use them for not only you as a finishing product, but we also use it as a base for smoothing the hair for us to really slick it into a nice, tight holding, uh, smooth ponytail. Okay, so this is the Keracare Edge Tamer, and that's the glaze that you can see there. Um, the other one that I use if I was not using this one is, okay, I don't know where I've put it, but it's called Gummy Professional. Okay, that's an ultra holding wax, and it's called Gummy Professional, spelt G-U-M-M-Y. And you can find that on Amazon on in packs. Uh, just check online, you'll find it there. Uh, so what you would want to do, because your Afro hair, if you're going to use gel, because this does have gel on there as well. So what you want to do first is do not put gel on your Afro hair or curly hair uh, before you put the glaze, because that is going to cause the hair to start to go back curly or to revert back because your gels are water-based. So you want to make sure that, you know, you you base the, the hair first before you apply any gel that you want to put on there. So what I did was I applied this glaze. It's literally applied all over the hair. So you don't have to open up the hair in section. Just comb the hair essentially to the area where you know you're going to tie it. And then you're just going to maintain that hold. And then you're going to just take with your fingers the product here, the glaze, and you're literally just going to apply it all the way around the hair. And then using a combination of your combs, so I tend to use a combination of my uh, cutting comb. I also have my pintail comb. So the smaller combs are the ones that I'm going to use to comb through the hair and start to smooth it and bring it up into place. So once the glaze goes on the hair, it actually holds it nicely. So you're not having to worry about hair falling out and going all over the place as you're trying to smooth it. So the glaze helps you to control the hair. And then once that glaze is on there, you're essentially going to smooth and then you're going to tie the hair and then the gel is going to be the finish that will go over it just to, you know, add the, the hold that we really want to the hair, okay? So some of the gels can go super hard. Um, I've, I've not really used Eco Styling Gel a lot, so I can't really say anything about that. In case someone is thinking, oh, I've got Eco Styling Gel, or can I use Eco Styling Gel? You can. I've not used it to be able to give you much feedback on how it performs on someone's hair when I've used this technique. But the one that I use is the... I use the Nixon Freeze Gel. So this is a gel that I've used for a very long time. We, we use it a lot when we do dreadlocks, when we're locking someone's hair, we use this. But I also like this for any updo styles that I'm doing when I need to smooth it because it's going to dry with a clear finish. It doesn't go flaky. It doesn't leave like any white buildup or anything like that on the hair. And it works well with any of my glaze or edge control that I put on the hair first, okay? So you do want to find products that work well together but essentially any gel is going to work. Um, I wouldn't use the, there's times that I wouldn't use the got to be the Schwarzkopf because it dries super hard, unless that's the style that I'm doing and I want it for the client to keep in for like a week to two weeks, then by all means, you're going to want something with like a very hard hold to the hair. So the got to be glue is going to do that for you. But there's so many other options in terms of gels that you could use. So I don't know every single type of gel out there, but I know there's many, many options for us to pick from. But you just find what you prefer and what you like using. And essentially that's what you're going to do. But as long as you want to get that finish that you want and maintain that straight finish on the hair, you're going to make sure that you put the glaze on there first and it has to cover any area that you're going to put any gel, has to have the glaze on there. So that's essentially creating a barrier between the hair and the gel so that when that gel goes on the hair, it's not going to cause the hair to revert back, okay? So that's essentially what I did here. And for tying the hair, I don't use like an elastic band. Some of you might uh, be familiar with like the bungee, which is like a stretchy uh, type of, uh, like a rubber stretchy, uh, elastic band it's not an elastic band 
<laughs> it's a hair tie. It's quite stretchy. It's got two hooks on the ends of it. And it's quite long and stretchy. So some of you have the bunch and you're like, yes, Michelle, we know what you're talking about. For some of you, you might not know. I do have one, but I can't remember exactly where I placed it. So I still need to work out where I where I put it so I can actually show you guys and you know what I'm describing to you. Okay. But I tend to not use that, but I've used it before and it works perfectly fine. But I just find it easier for me to just create like a like a double triple thread so this is a thread that i use for weaving and what i've done is i've taken it and then i doubled it uh about three times so you know this one is doubled twice so essentially it's got like uh four four lines of the thread just joined together just knotted on the ends there and this is what i would actually use to tie the hair so i would hold the hair in the position with that i wanted to and then i'll bring it over and then i would either if i've got an assistant with me they would hold one side of the thread for me. I would get the model or whoever's hair I'm doing to hold the other thread and pull the opposite direction. And then I'll take the other side and then start to wrap it while I pull at the same time. So that essentially creates like a really nice tight hold to the hair. It can be super tight. So, you know, ask the person that you're doing the hair if it feels comfortable because it can get super, super tight. If you're looking to get that, that sharp hold, essentially creating like, you know, lifting, giving someone a proper like facelift <laughs> that can happen with that method. But obviously be careful. You don't want to cause damage to the hair. You don't want to be the, to let, to, you know, to have the person be in pain. Okay. As much as we want the style to look nice and sharp, we don't have to cause pain, you know, and in any point where we're able to avoid that, then we try our best, not, you know, to avoid that. So essentially you just want to ask the person if it feels comfortable, if it's not too tight, if it's tight, then you loosen it. For some styles, you do need it to be tight for it to actually hold and to stay the way that you want it to. But essentially, that's what I did on here. So the only thing on here is the glaze and a little bit of the gel just all over the front and all the way around the back of this hair here. And then the hair attached here is the expression hair that I tend to use again. So I literally just um, prepared the hair and then this was just braided over the hair that's held in the ponytail to join it together okay so that's essentially how that ended being on the head so on the last masterclass that i did specifically on ponytails and uh the hair bands like we just did i did do a demonstration of how to essentially attach your hair extension uh but for anyone who really wants to see this i'll probably do another video on my instagram just to quickly show you how to attach the hair uh, but essentially you can watch that video on my youtube the one that i did uh beforehand which covers how to actually apply the product and also how to attach the ponytail on there as well in case someone really wants to know how to do that okay so with this one here as much as it looks like it's finished i do want to go in and add a little bit more hair to it so i had this idea in mind of creating like a like a five braid cage type of effect where you have smaller single braids wrapping over the larger uh, braids that we have here. So I'm hoping that what I see in my head is going to be <laughs> translated well on the actual training head, okay? So this is actually new. So you're, learn you're seeing this for the first time and I'm seeing this for the first time because I've not, I've not done it, but I had the idea and I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do, okay? So um, I hope <laughs> this comes out well. And also when you guys try, I hope you have the same luck like I'm going to have. So again, I've got my hair extension here. It's cut into the length that I want. And I'll be using my crochet hook uh, to help me to attach the, air, the bits of hair that I want to add to that, okay? So with this here, I'm going to do them slightly small, um, smaller than the actual initial braid that we have here. So what I'm just going to be doing is I'm going to go in from just underneath the hair here, and then I'm going to add the extra hair that I want to be braided over this uh, larger braid that you can see here. So with my crochet hook, so these you can get them from Amazon. I have a collection of these because I this is a method that I use for a lot of things. Uh, we do things called uh, such as crochet braiding. 
and we use this hook method to attach the hair as well. And I also use it when I've got bits of hair sticking out that I want to tuck away after doing like a cane row. Or um, if I do cane row and I've got the hair sticking down and I want it to be covered up, especially if it's for like a wig or something, instead of using pins, I would use this method to kind of go in between the sections and kind of join the hair together, okay? So again, there's many ways that you can use this, but this is just one of them. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to go in just underneath here, just hook that through. And then I'm going to latch this hair onto that and then pull it through here. So just be mindful that obviously if you're doing in very thick sections, you might find that some of the hair doesn't want to go in as smooth as you might want it to. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. So once this is hooked through, I've got this gap here. So bet in between that gap, that's where I'm going to take the other hair and then bring it through. And essentially it's creating like a knot effect in the hair, okay? So now I've got the extra hair on the side that I want here on my hair extension there, okay? So I'm just going to add um, all along this here and then we are going to go back and then braid these hair pieces that I, extra hair on the sides and then we'll see how it goes. Cause <laughs> you know, to be honest, when I do things that are creative, I might have a slight idea and a slight plan, but it just comes naturally to me as I proceed with the style. So I don't always have a clear plan. I'm, I can't always tell someone, okay, this is exactly what I'm doing. And this is how it's going to come out, okay? So my my mind works, uh, you know, <laughs> in a way where I just create as I go and whatever comes out will come out. And, you know, I've been lucky enough. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not gonna say like, you know, I've been blessed enough that every time I style the hair, when it comes out, it looks good. So, <laughs> so I don't always have a clear plan. So I can't tell you guys like, yeah, this is, what this is going to look like, but you know, everything just changes as I progress, as I go, okay? And the inspiration just comes and my fingers just do what they need to do at that time. Right, okay, so I have two pieces added to this. So I'm just going in literally just from behind and the sides there, because I don't want that to show too much when we actually finish this down, okay? And with a crochet hook, it's very easy to use because you can literally just attach bits of hair anywhere you want to along the hair. So I've literally got one bit there, another bit there, and then one more here. And I think I will do, I think it's going to be at least maybe, all right, I'm going to add six on there. I don't know how it's going to look, but I feel like I should add six on there. Um, and then we'll see, we shall see what will happen to this look. I'm hoping that it will come out nice. So going to be an interesting look again I will probably add accessories to this eventually when I do style this um, I'm not sure what accessories will end up going in I will just open up the treasure box <laughs> and we'll see what inspiration draws to us when I when I do the styling okay um, yeah so that will be interesting to, to see what will happen with that so this one, I feel like I'm going to add it to the top here instead of the side. And um, yeah, I'm going to do that and then we'll see what happens. You know, let's just do it. Let's do it and we'll see what happens. Okay. It's Sunday. We can be very carefree with this and just see what happens with this look. Right. Okay. So, I mean, even if you did this, maybe you wanted to have the extra hair just sitting out. Maybe you're going for like a very dramatic kind of, um, kind of like a warrior type of look. You know, those Viking movies where sometimes the women have like different braids and some of the hair is left out. That essentially could be this kind of look where you just do the chunky braid, go in with a crochet and you start add bits of hair to it. And then you can add some of them with like string or something. And you can literally play around with the different ways that you can do that. But I already like how this looks. I feel like this could be a look. <laughs> this could definitely be a look. I would wear this. <laughs> if my hair was long enough to, <laughs> to attach a ponytail, I would actually 
be one of those. You would actually see me with this, actually, with all sorts of colors on the hair. Um, actually, it would probably be like gray, uh, silver gray, because I really love that color when I use extension on my hair. Right, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to braid this. So I'm doing well for time because I thought I would be like panicking. So I left this for last because I knew that we didn't have a clear idea of how this would come out. So I did not want to risk uh, possibly going over time, okay? So all I'm just going to do is to braid this hair here and and then I will be using my crochet hook to, you know, crochet the hair in and around the larger braid there. So this is quite long. So when you braid, you just want to make sure you're always smoothing over the hair so that it doesn't get tangled. Um, but otherwise this hair, I love this hair because it's easy to work with. I would, I, I would never use, I don't, I don't know if I should say never, uh, but chances are I wouldn't, I wouldn't use like human hair for this type of styling when I'm doing like the ponytails like this, unless that is what was needed uh, for the style. Maybe the person specifically wants to have human hair, but the human hair extensions that we tend to use, um, a little bit slippery, a little bit uh, fly away. They, they're not as smooth as using the synthetic hair. So I wouldn't generally use that. I would always use more of my synthetic hair. So that's a nice long braid there. That's done. Uh, so one down, three more to go after this one. Cause I've got five. I know I said I was doing six, but I'm not sure if I should continue with six or just do five. I'm going to do five. If I need to go in and add another one, then yeah, we'll do that. Okay. So I like this because I did combine a little bit of that gold, that golden blonde tone that you see there. It's like a, it's like a dark golden blonde. I don't know if you can really see it on there, but you got a little bit of tone in the color there. So again, just using different colors can help to make this stand out a little bit more than what it might do if it's all just one color. But, you know, get the hair extensions, play around with it and see what you come up with. I absolutely love my synthetic hair extensions because I do so much. <laughs> I do get a bit carried away to be honest with some of the styles that I do. And then sometimes I shock myself and I'm like, well, okay, so this is what we've done. Like, well, okay, this is interesting. Um, yeah, so just have a couple of packets and play around with them and see what you come up with, okay? This is how it's looking so far. Uh, we've got the braids in there. So essentially, probably when I finish braiding this down, I might feel like, okay, we could possibly add more of our extra hair on the sides there. And if I need to do that, then I shall. Again, being mindful of time. I hope everyone is enjoying the Sunday. It look, it's looking sunny out there. I would love to go to a park somewhere and enjoy the sun, but... I've got work to do. <laughs> so Sunday for me is like the first day of the week. So I work on Sunday. Right, okay. Um, if I had, maybe I could add a brighter color in here or I could just leave it. Let's not, I, I don't want to get carried away. I'll, I'll leave the colors as they are. Okay. All right, so if anyone's got any questions, um, please ask me any questions. If you don't, then that's fine. You can just enjoy the process and just enjoy watching. But yeah, so if you've got any questions regarding anything that I've done so far, then let me know. I am liking how it's all looking, actually. It's all looking good. Okay. So we've got one more. So when you do do the attachment, um, I would suggest with the thicker braid that you do, make sure it's uh, nice and firm and not too loose. Because when you do attach the hair and you're slightly pulling on it as you're doing your, your braiding on there, if your cane row, the light, sorry, if the light, the large braid is quite loose, you could pull that out more than what you would actually want to happen. So just be careful with that, okay? 
Um, if you wanted to do this look, maybe you're not 100% confident with uh, like the single braiding like I'm doing here. You can actually buy hair that's pre-braided now. So, I mean, there's so much option now that cut out most of the time that you could spend, you know, hours braiding, you know, this type of smaller size braids. Um, so you can buy the, the hair extension that's pre-braided and then you can just use that to attach to the hair as well. You probably might not find one that is like a large one like this, but again, you never know. If you go on Amazon and just type in pre-braided large hair, large pre-braided hair or chunky braid that's pre-braided or something like along those lines, um, you should hopefully find something. But yeah, so if you're still not at that point where you're confident with braiding with extensions, you can buy the ones that are done already and then just have that in your collection in case you're required to style a hair using maybe some kind of braid look um, smoothed into a ponytail or something and then adding some braid again that would just benefit you as a stylist to just have that at hand so you don't have to worry about spending hours uh, doing the braiding because it does take takes time to do this okay um, right okay so I've got the four there done and then this is my fifth one here so looking at this I might, hmm, I might add a few more, maybe. All right, I'll do this one and then we'll see. But it's looking like maybe if we put more in there, it would look nicer. But yeah, I think maybe two here, like I did with this one here, that's right in the, on the top of that chunky braid that we have here. Okay. All right. So I've got 35 more minutes. I'm likely going to finish this in the next 10 minutes. So that will leave us time for any questions. And if not, then we'll be finishing this early and you guys can go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Okay. Okay. All right, this is quite long. So I'm having to really move that. So again, this could be done for anyone's hair, to be honest. You can do this for kids' hair. Um, you can do this for adults' hair as well. With kids' hair, when it comes to extensions, it's usually like when it's like a special occasion when they would come. Um, so I'm speaking based on like when we've had people in the salon uh, bringing their kids to have something done with extension. It will either be maybe like a birthday or, you know, a, a special occasion. So with that, it would be, you know, adding a little bit of the hair extension and then styling the hair the way that you'd want to. So with this, I'm actually just going to leave the amount that we have in there as it is and I'm just going to go in so I'm literally not using the crochet I'm just pushing the the large the extra hair extensions through the larger piece of hair just there just like that so as it crosses over to the hair so I have I'm getting a phone call coming through I'm hoping that is not the delivery people calling me to say we are outside <laughs> with your delivery that would be a nightmare Right, okay, I'm almost finished anyway. Right, okay. So I'm just pushing that through and just crossing it over. So if you want, you can use a crochet hook, but because this is quite large, I'm not necessarily going to need to actually use the crochet hook right now because this braid is thick enough for me to just go in and do that. So if I turn it, so it's like, how do I stand so you guys can see what I'm doing? I hope you can see it okay. Um, so once I get to the end of this, what I'll do is I'll braid it all in together. And the bits here that are sticking out, I will um, go in and then just blend it into the rest of the braid there. So we can just tuck it all away and hide it so we're not seeing any of the bits. So this is where I'll go in with my crochet hook and then I would use that to tuck that in a little bit. So I hope you can see how that is coming through there. 
so it's looking um interesting <laughs> yeah so once i finish with this i would probably put in some accessories to it i'm not sure what i would use i'll probably use a combination of belt buckles in there just to give it more like a dramatic finish but essentially that's another way that we could use our braided hair extension with our crochet hooking method so this is when i'll go in if i bring that a little bit closer and bring that down so you guys can see so i'll just go in just underneath here you can see the bits that are sticking out so this is where i'll just go in with my crochet hook and just bring it through the section of my braid and then i'll just hook that in and then i'll just bring it in and then the more i do that eventually it will start to tuck the the ends of the hair away and hiding them away so you don't actually see any of those in the hair at all okay so what i'll do is shortly i'll go ahead and tuck everything in like i was just showing you with one of these and then i'll be show, uh, taking images of this and you'll be able to see up close and it will be this will be essentially the finish of the style and then you can just put in the accessories where you want to so i like how that's finished and that's looking a little bit more interesting might look like a, just a you know just a regular ponytail around the front and then you look at the back you're like okay so we see you have something going on there with the style okay so again that's the the finish on the hair there these are the looks that we've done and i will take pictures of them individually and they should be on my instagram at some point and uh you will be able to replay this when you watch it back uh again i'll put a posting on my instagram when this is up on youtube so you know when you can go and watch it but i hope you've enjoyed the master class and you've picked up some tips and styles that you could essentially do so that's the back of that one here and that's the side there and that was last i i do love how this is looking so i can't wait to take pictures and just finish tucking that in um and then that's just the other one there okay so thank you so much guys for joining me this morning and I do appreciate you taking the time and I hope you put it into practice and then see how you get on with it. So I'll be ex I'm excited to see what you guys put together. But yeah, so thank you so much. I appreciate you all and enjoy your Sunday. All right. Thank you. Until next time. Bye, guys.